Now back to Labour's stunning near wipeout in the Northern Territory election. New Chief Minister Leo Finocchiaro said in a victory speech crime was a huge issue in this election. And it's not just an issue there, of course. The great people of the Northern Territory have spoken loud and clear. They want to live in a safe community where our police are supported with better laws as we address the root causes of crime. In fact, even as Territorians were voting last weekend, Finocchiaro saw what a massive crime problem she's inherited. Over the past four days in Alice Springs, for instance, dozens and dozens of cars smashed up, the World Vision office vandalised, local shops broken into and robbed or simply trashed for the fun of it. But we don't just have armed forces now giving gender awareness lessons to our allies. In the Northern Territory, the police commissioner under Labor went to the Gama Festival to apologise for what police had done to Aborigines. It's basically recognising the injustices and the harms uh, Northern Territory Police have been involved in in the previous 154 years. Now, when I was a boy in Darwin, the younger brother of my best friend was John Elferink, who became a police officer there and got the Northern Territory Police Service Medal. He later got into politics with the country Liberal Party and became Attorney General. He's now a lawyer. But just before this election, he sent back his Police Service Medal in protest at that apology. John Elferink joins me now. John, thanks for your time. Great to see you again. Why did you send back that medal? Well, the reason I sent back the medal was because I was deeply irritated. Uh, I worked with a whole bunch of very fine people for uh, over a decade and a half. Uh, and during that period, um, I saw those very fine people uh, serve all people of the Northern Territory. Uh, and in that service, uh, they often put their own lives and well-being at risk without thought for their own well-being, uh, only uh, to see that now being effectively trashed by a commissioner who determined to make an apology. Now, you've got to remember there's two important elements. Uh, much of that service was actually in the defence of Aboriginal people in the Northern Territory. And you've also got to remember that many of the police officers who served at various ranks were Aboriginal people themselves. So an unqualified apology uh, from the commissioner of police for all the harm done to Aboriginal people um, at the hands of the Northern Territory Police simply painted a really unfortunate picture. Uh, from my perspective, I just thought to myself, if, if you're going to commoditise uh, the reputation of so many fine people, uh, then the only commodity I have to respond with is the medal that you gave me for my service. Uh, but that medal represents the service of so many other good people who have placed themselves in danger in service of all people of the Northern Territory, including Aboriginal people. Well, it's interesting. I mean, so many police have said over the last uh, few years they feel totally unsupported politically and by the top brass. And, of course, they've lost authority within Aboriginal communities uh, the, as well, which is a very... Well, it puts them in some more personal danger too. Um, how much did this crime wave, do you think, cost Labor in this election? And is that a, a message for, you know, for politicians in other states? I think that there's no doubt that the crime wave that uh, has struck the whole of the Northern Territory, but Alice Springs in particular, uh, has cost the government deeply. Uh, the new government, of course, has this challenge in front of them as well. Uh, and they have to deal with a part of the problem, which is that they have a part of their community which is uh, completely subsidised uh, by welfare sp spending in such a way that the federal government spends millions of dollars every fortnight in the Northern Territory pouring money into the pockets of essentially idle people. And then the Territory government, on the other hand, other hand has to then spend millions of dollars cleaning up the resulting mess. Until there is a reconciliation between uh, those particular forms of spending, uh, this problem will be an ongoing challenge in the Northern Territory. At the, at the moment, the Territory government is stuck with this, this problem where they have to respond when the other side of, or of government or the federal government is pouring so much money into the hands of, unfortunately, so many idle people. Uh, and it's sad that those, uh, many of those idle people are Aboriginal people. Um, the Aboriginal people of the Northern Territory own half of the Northern Territory outright. One of the great tragedies in the Northern Territory is that ownership of land has not uh, translated into jobs and wealth and 
uh, created opportunities for those Aboriginal people uh, beyond being in possession of the land. Uh, when the Aboriginal Land Rights Act was, was passed, uh, the then Fraser government and, and Ian Viner promised it would be a, well, a wellspring of, of wealth. And that hasn't worked out for Aboriginal people. So welfare has tried to, uh, to, to cover the gaps and that passive welfare, something that was identified by Noel Pearson 20 years ago, has continued to corrode uh, at the very heart of uh, the Northern Territory and the Aboriginal people in the Northern Territory as well. It's very distressing. Well, it's true, but it's massive spending. Um, it's the reliance, it's this, this making a fetish of, of so-called Aboriginal culture. The point is you cannot lift people out of poverty by pouring money into places where there is no work, no meaningful work or very little, and, uh, and it's money for nothing for pe people. Any community would go feral in, in those circumstances. And I don't know what the answer is other than closing some of these uh, remote communities and helping people transition to where there is work. What do you make of that? Well, I think that one of my great criticisms is that with all of the assistance that we have been trying, we as a, as a community, uh, for all the right reasons, by the way, there's nothing wrong necessarily with the motives. Um, but, for all those, but for all of that, we have, been tr we have effectively incentivized dependency. And that's singularly the most uh, dangerous thing that we could possibly do because that dependency uh, has become manifest in an indifference to the responsibilities that people have as citizens. Um, Correct. Kids should be going to school. They're not. I've seen, I've seen schools uh, in these remote communities, the teachers at the, in the classroom, zero kids in the classroom. Uh, money gets poured into health clinics, roads, services, sewerages, or, uh, sewerage, housing, all of those sorts of things. And it's all in an effort to hope that these people will pick, them up, uh, pick themselves up by their bootstraps. But there is no expectation. And in the absence of that expectation, well, that's, that's the whole thing, parents John, are dislocating. That's a, that's a collapse of personal responsibility. And it's made worse by preaching professional victimhood and, you know, uh, white society is terrible and you owe us. Well, what's the incentive to get off your backside? I mean, a lot of uh, Aborigines, of course, have, but what we see uh, in some of these communities breaks your heart, particularly the children. John Elfring, good to see you again. Thank you so much for your time.